Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. I have been working on repairing my compressor recently and I ran into a bit of a problem which was the fact that I needed to replace a gasket and I didn't have any gasket material. So I rang a few suppliers and got them to send me out some free samples. So I've got this stuff here which I'm going to be using. It's good for a few hundred degrees Celsius and a few hundred PSI as a general purpose gasket. Asbestos free. So I'll cut that to size, punch the holes in it and finish putting my compressor back together. And I also got them to send me a couple of 2mm thick pieces as well. So I've got some 1.5 and 2mm thick gasket material there in stock now. Another company that supplied gasketing material also had a bunch of materials and products that I was interested in. So I asked them if they could send me a small care package with some samples of their materials. And I'm guessing that this is the package, so we'll open that up. Now here's one of the materials that I requested a sample of, which is a piece of Kapton tape. Now I haven't played with this stuff before, so I just wanted to get a feel for it and get a small piece to play around with. And I also got a copy of the general information sheet here so I can read up on the sort of specs that we're looking at. Another product I requested is a sample of their heat shrink tubing. You can never have enough heat shrink tubing, so he sent me a few short lengths of various sizes. I've never used anything that small, but um, it's good to have in stock. Everything up to probably a 10mm or 13mm sleeve here, and I don't know what that is, probably like a 20 mil wide or something, so a fairly large one, um, and everything in between. So, as I said, that'll go in the kit. Now, the last thing I've got to show you in this package is this piece of gasket material here, which they call Blackmar. Again, it'll do the same job as the other gasket that I showed you earlier. But um, two people are going to send me samples, then I'm not going to complain. Just open that up. And there we go. We've got one which is probably a two and a half or three mil. That looks like a 1.5. And that looks like a 0.5 there. So we've got three different thicknesses, three sheets, roughly A4 in size. So that'll go into stock. Now we've got more than enough gasket material to get us through the winter. So this is the compressor that I've been working on recently and as you can see we've nearly finished putting it back together. The only thing we've got to do now is mount the head back onto this flange here, like so. Uh, now to do that we just need to cut a small gasket to fit on the flange here. Now that's the reason we got the facet omnia material and the black mark so that we can cut our own gasket. Now when I took this compressor apart, I cleaned it all out, got it all ready to reassemble and when I got to the stage of putting this end cap back onto the main housing here, I realised that this gasket, which sort of fit in there like that in between those two pieces, like so, um, when I went to put that back onto the back plate here, I realised that it had shrunk down in all directions by about 3 or 4 millimetres, so I wasn't able to get it to fit in the grooves properly, so I couldn't use it, um, although I did try and it started leaking oil out of a few spots, so I had to take it all apart again, clean it all out. Now instead of using this gasket as it was, I thought I'll add a few more holes, it didn't actually have that many holes in it, but I added a few more because I thought, well, that'll just help for the whole thing to stretch out a bit and maybe we'll you know, make up that three or four millimetres by having less to pull on, less material to pull on. Uh, that didn't work, so I had to resort to using some Permatex Ultra Grey, which is a rigid high torque silicon gasket maker, and I've just gone metal on metal and put the silica all the way around this joint here, bolted it together, and then just waited half an hour, added it a little quarter turn to each bolt, and uh, that seems to be holding up fine. Now, after I did all of that, even though I didn't have the right gasket material, 
I thought I'd be really clever in my wisdom and I got out some um, cork nitrile rubber gasket uh, material that I had in stock and knowing the fact that it was not made to seal this sort of a flange uh, on a compressor I thought I'd give it a go anyway because I was so close to finishing this off. Now obviously it didn't work really well you can see what's happened to the gasket it's just crumbled into pieces here it's really badly compressed and it's not looking like it's in very good shape at all it actually failed on the third try at around 30 psi I did get it up to about 60 psi twice for a short time uh, but the third time it just all fell apart I had to actually put a bit more tension on the bolts just to keep it sealed and once I did that I think a bit of the cork material fell off on the inside and it stopped the piston from cycling and so um, that is a complete fail and that's what happens when you don't use the right material for the job. Now I've got the plate here which holds the valves for the um, compressor head and I've got that sitting on top of this gasket material here that I'm going to use so we'll just go ahead and mark the line that we're going to be cutting for the OD and we'll just mark out the holes for the bolts to go through get rid of that plate and we've got a nice little ring and location for punching out the bolt holes now we've got to cut the ID and it just so happens that this brass tube here is the same OD as the um, OD of the piston so we'll just center that up 13 millimeters there, 13 there, put that right on 13, okay now that's pretty spot on so I'll just push down there And carefully mark that line. Now I've got a bit of Adam Booth going in the background. And there we go. We've got the gasket fully marked out. So we've got the OD, the ID, and the location for the four bolt holes. So I'll go ahead and cut this out and this compressor should be ready to put back together. There we go, so we've got the OD cut, it's pretty good. We'll go ahead now and work on punching these bolt holes out and then we'll work on the ID. Now as you can see here, the gasket has actually cracked because the hole was too close to the edge and the, um, the taper of the punch just put too much pressure on that edge there and it's just sheared away. So I've tried drilling it and that seems to work pretty well. Well, so I'm going to go with that and um, we'll cut a whole new one. Let's go from there.
Looks like we're back in business.